Hi, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and welcome to Workshop Wednesday. This is our ISU-152. The Soviets affectionately referred to it as the Beast Killer, as it could literally blast off the turret of the heaviest German tanks. It's a fan favourite at Oz Armour Fest, but ever since we've had it, it's had steering issues. So Steve is going to dive in and see what can be done. The uh, mighty ISU-152, you can see by the crazy angle that it's at, that's sort of about where it stopped wanting to turn. It sort of pivoted pretty easily to the right, but it uh, was it just refused to go left at all, which is highly unusual for a socialist vehicle. more spacious than some of the other vehicles I've been working on. Pretty standard Soviet uh, fare. You're really jammed in here and there's lots of nice sharp edges on everything but there's the steering linkages. Yeah, so there's some definite detents there which maybe it's not happening on the left side. Yeah, so from this vantage point, you can see a few things that jump out straight away. There's a lot of bright metal that's come off here. Now, normally that'd be pretty alarming, but the fact that it's got uh, metal brake drums with the uh, cast iron lining material, it means if the brakes are working, you're gonna be getting quite a bit of uh, metal to metal contact and, and you'll be generating a fair bit of the stuff whereas on the left hand side you've got markedly less. You've also got an intermediate brake band or primary brake band which is nice and loose on this side and it's tight and we've got a main steering brake which is relatively loose versus one that's nice and tight. Time to get my golden spanner out and wave it over it, I think. Uh, taking off the armour cover off the top and flipping the radiator back out of the way actually opens up the living space quite significantly because uh, it's missing a great big cooling fan and all that stuff in here because it's got electric fans. So it makes it a relative breeze. Ha, good one. To get to the steering and brake system, which is fantastic. Looks very much like a Proto T54, T55 steering brake system. When you pull on the tiller, this cam here declutches the steering clutch and applies the brake band on it, but also releases the primary steering brake. What I'm looking at here is the approximate amount of uh, distance that that roller is going up on its cam. So it's about 35 mil. Moving over to the left side, which is the problem side, there's a significant difference in the position of where this cam and roller is compared to the other side, which I think is the reason why not enough of the movement is translating into get the brake band to grip sufficiently. And so that's sort of close to 65 mil. So it's probably almost double. You can see that the two levers pull back in a different position and I have to have a strap on this one to hold it back whereas the right hand side tiller is actually locked in place here and with it locked in place here it will actually turn by itself without having to put any additional effort on it where with the left hand one even if you're swinging off it like a gorilla the thing still won't turn left because the action's not translating into leverage down the back of the tank. As part of the process what I'm trying to do is to disconnect this control rod, get the split pin out, pull it off and see if I can lengthen it. Come on, come to mama. Ah, oh, look at that. <laughs> There's a spring. 
<laughs> and it doesn't want to come out. So there's plenty of free play in here. I just got to be able to get the get the bloody thing off. I might need to make some careful adjustment of the clearance here. Cut that out with the oxy torch so that I can sneak this thing off. Yep, I think that's a plan. <laughs> I mean, I figured I should actually just test it without it connected. And would you look at that, with it completely disconnected from all that mechanism down the back there, it only goes back that far. So I think in the past attempts that have been made to try and fix the steering issue has just been a, a case of tightening stuff on adjusters and brake bands and things, which really has done zero to fix this problem that, that mechanically there's a... a We've run out of travel. I've got the rod from the tiller disconnected and by pushing and pulling with a set of levers and things like that, I've actually been able to get the left hand brake to be locked into the position where you would have a full hard radius turn on the left exactly the same as what it's like on the right the, the positioning of all of the quadrants and stuff are now pretty much the same so the task for today I'm going to cut the rod and shorten it and I'm going to actually cut it back in a position where I can actually get to it rather than trying to cut the thread off the end of the rod and perhaps lose some adjustment. If I stuff this up I'm definitely going to be in a world of hurt because the mechanism to get this rod out is buried underneath the engine oil tank and that's literally hours of work to do so here goes nothing. And that's why people I wear these funny glasses all the time. Not just because I've got magnifiers in the bottom because I'm as blind as a bat trying to read up close, but because uh, literally it doesn't mat matter what you do here at Ozama, there's always a need for <laughs> safety glasses. Pretty ugly but it's functional. Next stop, test drive.
Whew. Another workout. This has definitely got to be up there in the top 10 of impressive vehicles. It's just super industrial the way they had a objective to put the biggest possible gun you can you can get on the thing and then put it on a mobile platform but it's got like a a face on it that only a mother could love that's for sure but it has a degree of fragility uh feeling in terms of the steering and things like that so you know again it's not meant to be driven long distances and turning and all of those sort of things because it just you, know, you sort of position it get it where you want it it does its job and then you get it out of there.